So here's my wall hanging. I finished it and at the very end of this video I've put it on um, my fence and you, <laughs> you'll hear all the, the my, my kids lawn mowing. Um, I just wanted to put this up and I look terrible. So my Maxwell, can we you see your face Maxwell? No, my Maxwell is <laughs> is holding it up for me. We're on my porch. So I'm I'm demonstrating the actual hang, um, the hanging sleeve, which is back there, um, hanging up on the, uh, which I've taken pictures of, hanging up on the, yeah, there you go, my Maxwell. There you go, that's my rod coming in and out. And that's, shh, shh. So there's my uh, Dresden plate hanging, wall hanging. Um, and I think I will make a tutorial. This tutorial is actually about the um, hanging sleeve that I've put on the back of it. Um, but I think maybe I will make a tutorial on the actual Dresden plate. But this, wall, this tutorial is about the hanging sleeve, which I'll show you in detail. But there is my Dresden plate wall hanging. And uh, I thank my Maxwell for holding it up for me against his, against his wanting to go out and get dinner. Um, but uh, there you go. So everybody, I hope you enjoy this tutorial on my hanging sleeve. And actually I've shown you the, uh, the details of my quilting, which I'm actually quite pleased with. So um, thanks again, folks, for tuning in. Bye. I've just finished quilting my uh, wall hanging here, my sunflower wall hanging. And I'm actually wanting to show you um, I'm holding the camera hopefully steady enough. I wanted to show you some of the quilting very up close that I did on this. Um, mostly it was done on my home sewing machine. This here was done on my home sewing machine. Uh, the the uh, nice, uh, what you call, um, the petals as it were. And the blanket stitch around the points of my Dresden plate were quilted on my home sewing machine. Now I'm sure you can see that I actually used a variegated thread. Can you see that? I used a thread that went from blue to yellow to dark green to actually it has pink in it, hot pink every color that you think well it's not even in this quilt but I chose to use that thread because I think a quilt comes a bit more alive now I made another video where I did some thread painting as it were and I used a, a similar thread it was on a, actually it was on a harvest themed quilt also just a panel and I did this thread painting as it were and I used this variegated thread because when you look at this quilt this little wall hanging, what color does it read? It reads gold and brown and maybe a bit of green and tan, correct? So you'd think, oh, I'm going to use gold and brown and green. Especially in the sunflower middle here. That's a chocolate brown sunflower. Can you see how I've quilted that with all those seeds? <laughs> I've used the variegated thread and it's yellows and golds and blues and greens, but it reads from a distance brown. It's only when you get up to a quilt that is made with variegated thread, or quilted with variegated thread, that you're like, oh my word, that is so cool. And it just, to my mind, adds a little bit of interest to a quilt. This blanket stitching here, hopefully you can see it, this blanket stitched here was quilted on my home sewing machine. The curve stitch, as I said, was started here and quilted on my home sewing machine. Now I chose to quilt this large Dresden in this manner. As you can see, I did not quilt the actual uh, blades of the Dresden. I quilted on either side. I, again, chose to quilt the inside brown with the with the variegated blanket stitch a wide blanket stitch that all of you have on your home sewing machine I did use a free motion quilting stitch obviously for this decorative stitching 
But if you don't have that, you could literally just do a grid, as I've said before, for your home, for your quilting. Um, uh, unless, actually, this would be a really good practice home um, uh, free motion quilting because you're really just going around in small circles and you can go fairly slowly. I used a free motion quilting stitch for this stipple along in the beige background. And then I usually, as you know, I usually do my borders one out, one out, one out, one out, all the way around. I wanted to get this over and done with, so I actually, if you can, can see, I actually use a wavy stitch, again, home sewing machine, every inch or so. Now, you know what I say about quilting your quilts consistently. This quilt is a wall hanging, and so it's quilted fairly consistently, but it's quilted enough um, this part isn't. This is very dense. This is not as quilted. This is a bit denser, and this is equal, about every inch or so. This is maybe every three quarters of an inch, but there's about an inch and a half there, and then there's nothing in here. But, having said that, this quilt will hang very nicely because I have quilted it. It is quite heavy here, but because I've quilted the outside, fairly consistently it will hang well and that's the importance when you're making a wall hanging you have to quilt it a little to my mind a little bit denser than usual the the leaves i just uh free motion quilted this is just a raw edge here around the edge and then just put a little a little um leaf leaf motif there again you can see my blanket stitch I like blanket stitch on app. Oops, there's my camera strap. I like blanket stitch on applique, on something like this because, to my mind, blanket stitch is is sort of like a folk art. Like I could have done it in dark brown, and that would have been nice. That would have popped. Um, this this quilt makes up beautifully in um in as a holiday themed quilt or as a seasonal quilt. You could do it in pastels for this spring. You could do it in in reds and greens. Um, for the winter season, or blues and silvers. I chose this one now because it's the leaves are turning where I live here in Pennsylvania. And I, I, I'm looking at, you know, harvest time. The border I chose was actually, um, you know, pumpkins, sunflowers, and uh, yeah. So that's my actual quilting. And just as an aside, I just would like to show you the back of my quilt here. Um, this back, if you can see, is completely uh, rust color, yellow, and greens. There's absolutely no white in this backing of my quilt, the fabric I chose. Look what color I chose to quilt it. Let me just put this kind of strap, sorry, around my neck. I chose to quilt it and use a white bobbin thread which I do. I use, a, I, I use white in my bobbin thread an awfully lot. And I think it looks super. Unless it was black, I would not do it that way. But if you can see how densely that's quilted, but even the back of this quilt is a bit of a, is a, bit of a work of art, if I must say so. I'm not bragging, please excuse me. Um, but now what I'm going to be doing, so that's the back of my quilt. You can really see the quilting on this quilt. So now what I'm going to be doing is I've already done two sides. I'm I, I stitched around to, to, uh, reinforce, to um, secure my quilt all the way around, quarter of an inch. Now I'm, going to, now I'm going to just cut off the edges where my batting and my backing are. And then we'll go from there. So I wanted to show you, I just cut off the edges um, all the way around of my backing and my batting, all the way around four sides of my quilt. And as you can see, I've actually gone ahead, and you don't have to do this, but I've actually gone ahead and I've rounded just slightly, just slightly my corners of my quilt. I even round the corners of my wall hangings. Um, by all means, uh, keep them straight straight. 
you can attach the hanging sleeve just the same, but as you know, I round the corners of my quilts. I even like it on my wall hangings. I just like the softer look. I actually did look up a mitering, um, a mitered corner, which I... Of course I can do it. Uh, it, it. It's not rocket science. I can miter a corner. But I actually personally do like the, the look of a rounded corner. So that's what I've done. I've gone ahead, cut the edges, and I've just uh, rounded my corners. Now what I've done is I actually found, um, a lot of people use a mu piece of muslin for the hanging sleeve on the back of their quilt. What I've done is I pulled from my I've pulled from my extensive stash here, and I've actually pulled a piece of fabric to coordinate. Now, I, now I usually make my um, hanging sleeves between three and four, between three and five inches. If I'm going to hang up a, a larger quilt, I will have a hanging sleeve about five inches, and, and that means you have to cut your hanging sleeve, say, ten inches. Because what do we do? We fold it in half. For this hanging, which is a small hanging, I've cut my hanging sleeve piece of fabric about six inches and then I fold it and in half and I press it in half. Now what I would like to show you is for demonstration purposes in my shop when I uh, sell my things um, I use this hanging rod here and because my <laughs> Because my house, um, you've seen some rooms of my house, they're full. Every, every wall is full with a load of stuff. I don't have any walls left in my house to demonstrate this, my wall hanging. So I actually photograph them for my shop out onto my fence. And it, it, it's a nice backdrop. And I, I have like little little hooks here to, ha to hook this little um, this hanging rod on. And so this is the rod for demonstration and pho photography purposes that I'm going to be using. Or if somebody buys it or wants it, they can use a rod even this size or even a little bit larger. But my hanging sleeve will accommodate this rod here. So I have my hanging sleeve. I've pressed right sides together and I'm going to go over to my, and I've done the corners of my quilt. Now, how this works is I'm going to attach, I've made it slightly longer than the edges of my quilt. Um, now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to, I've, I've, I've cut it roughly the, the, a little bit longer. Now, what I want to do is I want to actually measure, I want to come back here and on, on each side, to make it like a nice bit firm, I'm going to go in about, I would say about an inch and a half and, and uh, fold it. Hope you can see this. And another inch and a half over here and fold it. I, I'll pin that just so I'm, I'm sort of a, I'm sort of like away from the corner. My, obviously my hanging, my hanging sleeve doesn't go because I've curved the corners to the edge of my quilt, but it hangs beautifully. It will hang very, very nice, even with, it, with about a, an inch away from that edge, that corner here. So what I'm going to do is I'll be showing you, I'm going to now stitch these together. My hanging sleeve does not get the, the rod for me, how I do it doesn't go in between the, 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 the uh, sleeve. It goes between the sleeve itself and the back of the quilt. So it's a double, it's a double folded, nice, sturdy um, hanging sleeve. And then when we're done stitching it and binding it, then I will go back, believe it or not, I'm going to hand stitch. It's the only way I figured out to do. I'm going to hand stitch a nice sturdy stitch right here. And then my, my rod will go in between the, 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 um, the, the, the uh, sleeve and the quilt. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to secure these ends. I'm just going to stitch them down. I'm just going to do a nice little stitch down there, and I'll show you how I'm going to attach it. Just I'm going to, well, I'm just going to attach it to the top of my quilt, but I'll show you how I do that. And then I've actually, 
done binding, I've, I've made my binding for this quilt. I've used a um, sort of a, a paler orange and a yellow dot because I feel that that looks nice on the back side of my quilt. How I addition my binding, I like that on the back. And then I also like it on the front edge of my quilt. And again, binding is a personal choice. I was looking at a stripe, but this is a bit busy. So I just thought, but I didn't want a solid. I, I, don't, I, don't, <laughs> I don't do a lot of solids. I do prints on prints on prints. But I thought this, this red is a solid. And then it actually picks up the orange and the yellows of the actual sunflower. So I'm going to stitch my, I'm going to secure the edges of my quilt sleeve down. The size, about an inch in on either side of my uh, my quilt sleeve here having measured having measured my top about an inch in on each side and then I'm going to stitch it to the top of my uh, the top of my quilt here uh, just about a quarter of an inch so I've taken my hanging sleeve as I was showing you the right sides together and I've actually turned in the edge so that it's a it's fairly sturdy there because I'm going to be stitching. Remember, I'm going to be hand sewing this along. This is where my rod is going. So I'm just going to be stitching this hanging sleeve to the top, top edge. Make sure you're at the, at the top edge of my quilt. It's about an inch and a half from each end. I, I just used a cream thread. That's okay. Um, for, to, I should have used orange, shouldn't I? Oh well, never mind. It looks okay. Actually, no, so it's fine. So I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna back stitch that along there very close actually I'm going to do it very close to the edge because this is going to get this is I'm going to bind this edge just like I do normally so I'm just affixing this right to the top of my quilt that I know is all secured down remember I, I secured my actual quilt top so I'm just stitching this to the top edge here closely because I'm going to be binding this to the top edge of this quilt. So here's my hanging sleeve. reinforce that hanging even though I'm I'm going to be binding it so I take my take my things and now I'm going to be I'm now I'm going to be binding my quilt which I'll show you how I bind I've done this before as you can as you know what I've done is I will I won't I won't videotape the whole thing uh, but I'll show you how I do around the corners I start my binding if you remember I leave about a six or seven inch tail about two thirds of the way along one side and I just stitch along. I, I, if you remember, I stitch my binding to the back of my machine, uh, my back of my quilt, uh, about a quarter of an inch, maybe a little bit more, raw edge to raw edge. And I just want to have, show you how I do this. Now here's my hanging sleeve. All nice. I've, I've made this corner. Now if you remember, I just, coming up to my corners, this is how I bind all my quilts. Coming up to my corners, I just relax. I don't make tucks, but I just relax my binding right around. I check it makes a little tuck. It's okay. I just relax it around the, the needle. Just relax it. Keeping that quarter inch seam, it's fairly important. Just relax that binding right around or else it'll sort of curve inward. As you can see, I'm sort of almost um, making my stitches a bit smaller. And I just take bite by bite by bite of my binding. Now this is, now I'm gonna be binding. I'm going to be um, stitching through quite a lot of fabric here, but my machine can do it. And this, I'm enclosing that top edge of my, of my hanging sleeve. You can hear the, the machine. This is like about eight layers of fabric, but most machines do it quite easily. So I'm coming along with my binding. 
I, I, I make my binding about two and a quarter inches. A lot of people like to use, do their binding at about two and a half inches, which is whatever is your preference. I, I personally like a smaller, tighter binding. Um, and, and again, just my preference. But uh, like I say, most people want, you know, a, a two and a half inch. Um, so I'm gonna uh, coming around to this corner here, having loosened my binding around this curve here. Just keep it nice and loose. If you get a little tuck into there, it's okay. I don't. We say if you want to miter your binding and you've perfected it, how how wonderful, awesome, awesome, awesome. Now I'm just gonna finish. I'm just gonna finish binding, and then I'll show you how I finish up my binding. So I've attached my binding all the way around to the back of my quilt, as you can see. Got curving my corners as, you, as I did it. And now I've, what I wanted to show you is I'm actually bringing my binding. This is how I bind my quilt. I'm actually bringing my binding um, to the front of my quilt. And as you can see, as I said, my two and a quarter inch binding makes for a fairly thin binding, which um, I like my, I like the fabric. I like my binding to be, um, to be snug. I, I, I like my quilt edges to be snug in the binding. That's why I do it that way. But as I said, most people like it at two and a half inches. So I'm coming along and I'm stitching my binding. Now, I started at that edge. Again, it, I cannot, you know, me and ironing and me, just a few things. I cannot um, emphasize enough making sure you're sitting right in front of your sewing machine. Even if you're sitting a, a little bit off to the edge, if you're if you're a wheel of your chair. It sounds silly, but it's very, very important that you sit right in front of your machine. And this is, I, I find it very important with binding also. Anyway, that's just an aside. So here I am, I'm turning my binding, make, easing it out, making sure that this is nice and full. Because I've stitched this all nice and close to the edge, my binding is just going to turn over, right over that edge. And I'm going to top stitch it very, very closely along the edge of the, the um, binding there. Now, as I come along, I've shown you this before. Here's my hanging sleeve, right? Making sure that's all tucked in nice and straight. Nothing is, is, is um, bunching up. My hanging sleeve is free of where I'm stitching. I'm going to be stitching along here. And I just tuck, because I've just eased that um, that that uh, binding along my binding just folds right over as you can see it folds right over that seam and it folds right over my curve take it steady take it slowly just a few bits at a time moving your fabric ever so slowly these fingers are sort of holding it and and um, holding it steady and pushing it where it should go. Bring my fabric, pulling it up and closing that, all that stuff. Just folding it around there. Making sure my hanging sleeve is nice and free. Just bite by bite, stitch by stitch. Bringing it right in front of you. Those last few stitches before you're on the straightaway. Making sure your hanging sleeve is free. Making sure everything's tucked in. And then you come along. And then you can just whiz along and stitch your binding down. And there is my curve. There is the back of my quilt. So many people say, what does the back look like? Well, it, it, it looks like a machined edge. Oh, I think it looks fine. Like it's a machine bound edge. It looks sort of professional. Like it's not done by hand. Um, as I've told you before, I, I, I'm gonna have to hand stitch this down, which is like, oh, I'd pay someone to do that, but I'll do it. Um, but that will be the only hand stitching I'll do for the next 20 years. Um, I'll just bind this right around here. And then as you'll see before I, before I um, finish this up, 
there's my hanging sleeve there's my hanging sleeve lovely caught there and then I will stitch down a nice sturdy stitch as I've said and I just insert my my um hanging thing so I'll, I'll show I think I think I'll have thought photograph this out on the fence as I said before um so you'll have seen the finished thing and you'll have seen my um actual quilting so there you go there's my little hanging hanging uh wall hanging my seasonal wall hanging which is very very simple to put my hanging sleeve on maybe I'll actually show you how to do the Dresden plate do you want to see that I don't know do you want to see me do a Dresden plate um for my next tutorial maybe yeah maybe I'll do that um yeah so leave me a comment if you want to see me actually make my wall hanging um how I do my Dresden plate anyway um thanks for watching folks I'm just going to finish this up and go photograph it okay bye